Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's fur video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's fur video. So day 10 is going to take us around the 25th of November. We'll be actually set out beyond that with the GFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe we're around a couple of weeks. We're going to have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks, which gets us into the first half of December. I'll get on with that for you in a moment. Just say that the first video release say, was our 7 a.m. broadcast. We've also uh, released the Christmas update. Update, update number five for Christmas. That is ahead of uh, schedule. Normally we, re we release that in the evening, but this evening uh, we've got part two of the 12th winter, no, part two of the 11th winter update coming up. Here. I'm getting ahead of myself. Part two of the 11th winter update will be coming up for you at 6 p.m. So we had to, you know, push your uh, uh, Christmas update to earlier on in the day in favour of that because, of course, the 11th uh, winter update part two is going to be focusing on the analog side of things, and it's an important update this one looking at. Uh, uh, Enter La Nina analogs through various parameters like strength and position etc etc so uh, all of that is coming up uh this evening but of course we've got your 10 to 14 day right now i'm going to get on with it for you right now i think that's pretty much everything i'm going to say so hey having a lovely monday please like share subscribe on the videos thank you so much everybody uh for doing that right let's start off there with the century and temperature ct is uh, continuing to rise up. It's sitting now at 9.3, which is getting on for two degrees above average. So this has turned into a very mild, um, you know, very mild opening or uh, first half uh, to uh, November. That's provisional up to yesterday, the 14th. We're nearly halfway through the month now and significantly above average. That's probably going to stick around there, probably go up a little bit more. I'm not sure you're going to go up all that much more um from here but uh you know it's going to be a it's going to be mild for the next uh week or so probably not as mild as it has been but then we might see a bit of a drop in the temperature i wouldn't necessarily be rolling out you know the chance of a little bit of a ct collapse in the last week or so of a month it will be interesting to see what happens it depends how much of a northerly we bring in but the hints are certainly there you're going to see it in a moment that uh, we may be turning things quite a lot colder uh, through the final week or so of November. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. The next couple of weeks, the red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Northampton, local to me today. So um, we're going to be uh, a little bit above average over the next few days. Not all that warm, but you know, it is still going to be a bit above average with those upper air temperatures. And it becomes very mild again as we get towards the end of the week and into the uh, weekend. Really, really mild. But then we see a, quite a significant drop in the temperature taking place over the weekend, second half weekend, into uh, part of next week. And then through the last days of November into the beginning of December, we see that the upper air temperatures are generally cooler than average. So there are some really quite cold ensemble members in there, going down to between minus 5 and minus 10 at 8, 10, 50, 8. Of course, we do have these milder on some lengths up here, so not a completely done deal that will turn things colder, but it does look as though there could be a, quite a significant change appearing there for the final week or so of November. Precipitation-wise, going to be loads of dry weather over the next few days as it's going to be mild. And then it gradually gets more unsettled through the last days of November and into the beginning of December. We see more precipitation spikes going through. And, of course, if it's cold enough, and some of these on some members are really quite cold, as I say, if it's cold enough, not only do we have the chance of, uh, you know, not only do we have the chance of, um, of rain, uh, increasing rain into the end of November, but maybe even the chance of a little bit of snow. Should we have a look at snow? Uh, with this, so should we go there? And we can see there are a few snow spikes, snow row is beginning to uh, appear. That's on the sink, so let's have a look at the midnight run. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's not all that much um, dramatic going on, but it does also sometime around the 25th to the 29th of November. There's a chance that there might be a little bit of snow in uh, in some areas. That's uh, midnight run. If you have a look at the sink, there. Uh, again, which is continued to update. Yeah, that's quite a big precipitation spike just there. So no spike just there. So that will <laughs> that will give a bit of a covering. Of course, that's an outlier. But yeah, clearly, clearly the snow row is beginning to uh, move uh, for the final days of November. So we might have some 
uh, colder weather on the way. Let's have a look at the, uh, they want to go to there, and they want to go to uh, 8.50 precipitation. Um, so that's how the 6 said, uh, GFS on cyber So again, it's the same idea, uh, above average for the next few days, then a drop in the temperature taking place, and, and like through the final days of November, inside December, generally looking below average. In fact, I think the 6 said, Ensemble has shifted further to uh, cold. There are, there are fewer milder members on the six uh, ensemble graph there compared to uh, compared to the midnight run. So it looks like the GFS and its ensemble is shifting uh, more towards colder weather uh, through the uh, final days of November. However, this is still a little while away, so temperature anomalies on the 15th, 23rd of November are going to be above average, another mild average week coming up. Precipitation anomalies on the 15th, 23rd of November are going to be drier than average, mild and dry goes on, but is it about to flip? Are we going to get a November flip? Let me know in the comments what you think. This is how the uh, latest move from that looks from Earth Law School. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, uh, nosgool.net is looking. So uh, we've got westerly winds and southwesterly winds just passing to our north and west. Uh, and that's going to, those southwesters, westerlies are going to keep us mild over the uh, coming days. Uh, right, this is how the UK Met Euro is looking for midnight on Thursday. Mild, high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north. We bring in this southwesterly uh, wind. So. Just what I'm talking about. We are going to see further mild conditions up to the end of the week. Over the weekend, that high pressure starts to move out into the Atlantic, pulls out to west of the UK and Ireland. We start to draw in something a little bit cooler from uh, the northwest. So over the weekend, that's when we get our first push of, of cooler to colder air. Um, not going to be particularly cold, not going to be particularly dramatic, um, but it, you will notice a significant change in the field over the weekend uh, with that. As far as we get to with the uh, UK Met is to uh, midnight on Monday, when again the high pressure is centred to our west, mid-Atlantic ridge, not combining with Greenland blocking at this point, but we have got high to our west. And we're drawing in the wind from like a northerly uh, direction. So it is cooler to colder, not dramatically so. Will we get a second northerly later on next week? Let's have a look at the midnight GFS run and see what that one was doing. So this again for Thursday, bringing this mild west to southwesterly wind. We keep it mild and mainly dry into Friday over the weekend. Will be a lot of dry weather over the weekend, but the feel of the weather will change as high pressure falls out to west. We draw down this northerly, northwesterly to northerly wind. That is a cooler to colder wind, but real cold is going into Scandinavia with this trough of low pressure. So it's kind of on the periphery of that real cold. But, you know, it will be a significant change to the field of the weather over the uh, weekend. That carries on into the start of next week as well. Probably cold enough for overnight frost and uh, that sort of thing over the weekend into early next week. Notice by Tuesday, the midnight GFS run is raising the heights over Greenland. And so what eventually happens is that through the course of next week, we push this trough of low pressure through. And as that moves through, that starts to draw in a second northerly shot through the course of next week with this high pressure over Greenland and Iceland. That is a proper Greenland high uh, with those yellow colours there up to 1,045 millibars. Um, and with a low pressure in East Scotland, that starts to draw in a colder northerly. And eventually, it draws in a colder northeasterly. So by the time we get through to the end of next week, we look quite wintry there, I have to say. That's the 26th of November. It's a long way out, just beyond day 10. But that does look wintry. With winds in from the east and from the northeast, low pressure has slipped down into France. High pressure blocking to our north and west. And uh, that's sort of what we're driving snow showers from the uh, east of the areas that originated from Scandinavia with that. So the midnight GFS run definitely looking pretty wintry by the end of next week. Uh, so we keep those northerly winds going into the very extended range, and then eventually we start to try and move low pressure in off the land. I say try, because um, the midnight run is also attempting to raise heights over Scandinavia. So we finish up by the 1st of December. We have a proper old ding-dong battle going on, with low pressure in the Atlantic, high pressure over Scandinavia. Which way will that go? Which way will that go? I wonder. Um, this low pressure is key. If that rolls in, it will flat 
flattened off the Scandinavian high. If the low pressure projection goes down here, though, could allow the Scandinavian high to intensify and draw in an easterly wind from the Urals. So that looks poised and could go in either direction uh, by the 1st of December. Of course, it's so far out, but it's not worth being particularly concerned about. But, but again, GFS ending up on an interesting note. It's number six, Ed. Lots very latest as high pressure to our south, low pressure to our north on Thursday. We're drawing in most warm, mild southwest winds that we have done so often during this very mild autumn. Into Friday, again, staying mild, high pressures in the ascendancy to our south. And then over the weekend, the high pressure moves out into the Atlantic. That allows the first push of cooler to colder air to push down from the north. Temperatures drop over the weekend. And, uh, you know, you will notice the change. It won't be particularly cold. You will notice a significant drop in the temperature over the weekend. Into the part of next week, B6Z then has this area of high pressure sat over the country again. It is within a colder air mass, so that will definitely be producing overnight frost. Notice the 6Z is attempting to raise heights over Greenland again. So what happens with the 6Z is that around day 10, we start to push this area of low pressure through from off the Atlantic Ocean. Now, this is the one that Midnight Run was sending south and pulling in a northeasterly wind. Despite heights rising over Greenland, Iceland, the 6Z doesn't really pull in much of the northeast. Although around the 27th, we are quite cold, I think, with winds in from the north or from the northeast. But clearly, that is not as wintry with 6Z as the uh, Midnight GFS run was. It's all variations of a theme. Though, and, and the general idea is definitely, I think, turning colder than the last week or so of the month. How cold it gets, that remains to be seen. That's open to question. But it does look as though this very warm autumn is running out of road now, and uh, things are going to turn uh, significantly more seasonable through the last week of November. That's how we look as we end the 6th then. Again, high pressure to our west, we're bringing in like a northwest wind. Still haven't really got the heights up to Greenland. At this point, but it's certainly a lot cooler than, than anything we've had through this autumn so far. Moving on to the G, yeah. If you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. We've got to put on around 75 subscribers now to get to uh, 12 point uh, to get to 12.6k. So please give us a sub. Thank you so much for doing that. This is our GM is looking very mild on Thursday with winds in from the west south westerly direction. High pressure south, low pressure to the north into Friday weekend. That high pressure starts to move, changes position, moves out into the Atlantic, allowing cooler air or colder air to come in from the north. So by the start of next week, we are looking quite a lot cold with winds in from the north, high pressure to west and low pressure to the east now. Then the high pressure starts to ridge in over top of the country. That's within a cool air mass. That will bring overnight frost, of course. And as we move up towards day 10, it looks as though the uh, GM is probably going to drop in uh, northerly. I say that because it looks like the high pressure is pushing back out into the Atlantic there and starting to go up towards Greenland. So the only place that is trough for of low pressure, it's area of low pressure over Iceland to go is uh, going to be southwards, and so I reckon that the GM could well turn things a lot colder. As uh, if we could go on any further than day temperature, of course we can't. But if we could, I reckon that would drop into northerly. And then we go through to the ECM, and it looks like that with high pressure to the south, low pressure north on Thursday. Uh, winds from west southwest, it will be uh, really mild to end this coming week, but into the weekend. Again, same as all the young models, uh, high pressure changes position, moves out into the Atlantic, low pressure starts to dig in over Scandinavia, and that starts to allow a much cooler to colder northerly wind to set in. Then the high pressure sort of sitting around or close to the country just to our west as we go through the Opal next week, it's having a go, getting itself up towards uh, Greenland and pulling in. Uh, another shot of air from the north. We do actually pull in uh, a bit of a north northeast there on Wednesday, middle of next week. Um, that looks quite cold, but the, we're on the periphery of that. The cold air and with that is particularly into uh, Scandinavia, so, so we're just on the periphery. Nevertheless, it is significantly cooler uh, next week, if not colder. I mean, that's how we look as we get to day 10. 25th of November. Again, that high pressure is centred to our west, withdrawing in the wind from a northerly direction, whether it's northwest or north or northeast. Um, it's from a cooler air mass. And again, it's questioned beyond that of whether the high pressure goes back up here and uh, this low here drops southwards and 
if it does, then we would get a second northerly shot. Well, that, that actually would be easy. That would be like a third northerly shot. And uh, that one could be one that is properly cold and wintry. Uh, so this is how the precipitation type forecast is looking from Tometio.com. And uh, going to be lots of dry weather over the next few days, particularly in the south, of course, with high pressure dominating. There will be a cold front moving south on sometime over the weekend that probably brings some showery rain. And then it opens the door to those northerly winds, which could bring wintry showers into the far north and east of the country. Still lots of dry weather, though, as we go into next week. Some wintry showers running down the east coast there on the 24th of November. But overall, most places are dry. Uh, so so the, the dry spell goes on, just that the temperature is going to uh, change due to the change in the wind direction. Means so we'll be on the table within the e 7 Ensembles Today board day 10, which will get us to the 25th of November. 17 members of the e 7 Ensembles, including the control and the operation run, have high pressure out to our west. Low pressure is over Scandinavia. We're certainly looking a lot cooler, if not colder, uh, with that. And we've got 15 that have high pressure a little bit further west actually trough of low pressure when it's digging in from the north so that is colder and maybe a little bit of wintry potential with that uh 10 again with the mid-atlantic ridge extending up towards greenland trough of low pressure is in across the northwest europe winds are getting in from a north northeast direction that looks like it could be potentially rather cold and wintry and then we've got nine down here but again have that mid-atlantic ridge up towards green with a trough of low pressure over scandinavia but also has like a ridge uh, slightly to our south and so that just keeps it winds a little bit more from a west northwest direction and so that is the mildest option that's the mildest option uh, of the three bees two the 50 man with 10 there they are the coldest and most wintry options in two weeks time uh these are the options that we're going to have this is for the 30th of november the Final day of the month. 19 members of the ECM ensembles then still with a mid Atlantic ridge to southern Greenland. Trough low pressure to our east winds in from the north. That looks potentially rather cold and wintry. 16 with high pressure just slipping a little bit further south. It's probably still quite chilly with that, but just a little bit less cold winds in from the northwest. And then we've got 14 here that look very interesting. This has proper sort of Greenland blocking really. And uh, low pressure sort of to our south and east. Winds would be in from a northeasterly to easterly direction uh, with that. So, so that's probably the coldest and most wintry option for the end of uh, for the end of November. And that could give that could give some places quite a snowy end to November actually with uh, that option. Only fourteen going that far, um, but uh, but yeah, that has proper wintry potential. Uh, right, CMSV2, and then we're done. These are 500 millibar heights breaking down to wheat beers. The first wheat beer will take us from the 15th to 21st of November. The coming week is mild and dry with high pressure over the country winds remaining from the southwest. Week 2 uh, is the 22nd, 28th of November. That high pressure goes west and north, and that starts to allow colder air to move around the ridge from the north and from the northeast. So week 2 goes colder. Week 3 is going to be the 29th of November to 5th of December. High pressure again in the Atlantic to our west, up towards Greenland. Winds in from quite a cold northerly direction in week 3, therefore. And then week 4 shows a change. 6th to the 12th of December, high pressure begins to slip uh, further south. Was low pressure developing to the north. That reverts wind back into either a less cold or a milder westerly. That's four weeks away, though, of course. Temperature anomalies for week one, 15th, 21st of November, above average. You have got one more mild week to come, but then it goes colder into week two. This is for 22nd, 28th of November, below average temperature, particularly so for England and Wales. And over on the continent, looking really quite cold through there. Some places going down to three degrees or more below average. Week four, also, week three, I should say, also looking rather cold, 29th of November, 5th of December, particularly again, focus on England and Wales. Most parts of the continent, again, looking cold as well. I mean, it goes milder for week four, which is 6th to 12th of December. See the temperature going above average. Uh, then, 
all rather interesting, isn't it? Right, so if you enjoyed the video, please can you uh, click like. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for doing that. Drop a comment, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends and family about Gals Webbers if you get them to subscribe with you. Uh, we shall get to our ultimate target of 13,000 subscribers that much quicker. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. So, uh, there we go. All looking rather interesting, I have to say. It looks like next week, well, over week can really things will start cooling down and then uh next week if we get that second northerly shot through like the midnight gfs run was showing we do have a chance of actually some wintry weather before november is out could we do our first snow watch next week even i wonder uh right so uh that's if you tend to 14 there we'll be back at six uh we're part two of the 11th winter 2020 and 2022 update that's going to be looking at the analogs side of the uh, update and we'll be focusing on uh enso on lanina analogs through various parameters does a lanina uh you know uh, increase the chance of the colder winter what about if it's a weak lanina versus uh, a moderate lanina position of lanina Everything you could possibly want to know about La Nina and what effects it might have on winter will be uh, looked at in part two of the 11th winter update at 6 p.m. It's going to be epic. Uh, right, so just say that tomorrow we've got uh, our 7 a.m. upload. We'll have the ECMWF uh, 30 day slash uh, or two day for uh, Europe coming up tomorrow as well. Extended European outlook. And if that was enough, another 10 to 14 day as well. So it's going to be another epic day tomorrow. Every day is an epic day at Gazweb at this time of the year, I have to say. So uh, we, shall, uh, we shall see you later, you know, either for the winter uh, update part two or for tomorrow's videos. But for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.